You ready to talk about Paul McBeth versus Gannon Burr? I know you've been looking at your chops. Sure. Let's get into it. So uh, this was the graphic that was thrown up. And Ricky responded to this graphic. This was posted by the Disc Golf Pro Tour. It's 2015 Paul McBeth versus 2024 Gannon Burr. Best season ever. And it's, you know, Elite Series and PDGA majors, right? So you've got Paul winning five majors, Gannon winning two. Uh, Remember, too, we only have four majors. So he went two of four where Paul ended up winning all five majors that year. Elite wins. Paul had three. Gannon had seven. Average finish, Paul at 1.4, Gannon at 4.2. Worst finish, Paul at third, Gannon at 13. Total cash, uh, Paul at 53. The total cash, I don't really care. I'm not even going to say that. That doesn't mean anything to me. Um, Yeah, I'm not. I'm not talking about total cash. That's that's that. I don't think that's an argument. Uh, Ricky responded to this saying, "I was there for both." Macbeth, I was there for both Macbeth in 2015, and it's not even close. Uh, so go ahead, Yuli. You've got the floor. How do you feel? I don't. I honestly don't think it's even close either. I've been there for both, and I mean these statistics—they're a little jaded to me. Like if you look at if you look at Paul's statistics over there on the left. Mm-hmm. He won five. Like the big thing that sticks out of me, of, of course, is the five majors. Five, five. We there's never been five. He, he won them all. Just uh, happened to win them all when they were that year. That's crazy. Gannon with the two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you go down six for Gannon as far as elite series. Three for Paul. I believe right. Three for Paul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's the big thing that sticks out to me. Gannon, I think, played 19 Elite Series this year with the six win. Paul played seven that year and got the three. Mm. He played seven total. So about the same percentage. About the same percentage. You look at the, like you said, the cash really doesn't mean a whole lot to me because if you just throw it all up there, I think think Paul probably blasts Gannon's cash record if it was today and he does the same thing. Cash means no. It it doesn't really mean anything. You can't can't say that. (laughs) Um, The biggest argument that I hear people say, well, well, back then it was easier. Strength of field. Strength of field. Yeah, for who? Like, strength of field is the world championships is the world championships. The majors are the majors. Like, it's hard to win those. That's why there's only, you know, 20 people ever to win the world championships. It's the hardest tournament to win. No matter when you were playing it, you just heard of crazy. John Brooks was him and Ken climber were going back and forth. And I bet everybody thought, Oh no, Kenny just want, ran away from it forever. No, it was competitive back then. Mm. There were people trying to win the tournament. When I look at both sides, of course, people are better now. How about this argument? How about this? This is actually a funny thing to think about. How about we take the field now and you go throw them on a par 54 course back in the day mm. against those guys? Mm. Do you think they're just going to mop them up? No. King Climber was shooting 17 under at the world championship. They were playing as good as you could possibly play. You take those guys and you put, no, no, you take those guys and you put them in now. It's a whole new world. Of course, it's going to be tougher. You can't, you can't take those guys back then and throw them here. I I think the argument they have and more good players. uh, I think that's that's a silly argument to me because you're only as good as your competition is there. Sure. But I think context does matter. And you know, I'll, I'll talk about something that I know a little bit more about, which is like ultimate Frisbee Our our sectionals. So we had sectionals, regionals, nationals. That's how you qualified to go through our sectionals. When I first started playing, our sectionals included Georgia and North Carolina. So we had to play in our section to get to regionals. We had to play university of Georgia. We had to play Georgia tech. We had to play UNC. We had to play NC state. We had to play all these teams just to get to regionals. Come my fourth or fifth year, they did a whole realignment. And now our sectionals was just Florida. So all we had to play was Miami UCF, USF, F it. So to look and say, 
this team won sectionals and this team won sectionals. Like context does matter. And I think that's the big argument with the Gannon Burr is the context does matter. Paul could go to a tournament and play poorly. Not saying that he did, but I'm saying Paul could go in a tournament and play poorly and still probably win. Cause like your argument of like, if you take today's field and you throw it back on their courses, what would happen? Do I think, do I think Ken Climo could still compete? Yes. But the problem is there's probably like 16 or 17 guys that are shredding that course where back then it was Ken Climo and maybe a guy that's or maybe a, another that's guy. A, that's where, and that here's, here's my point. Okay. You see, I what, have, you see what I'm saying? I though? have to rebuttal with you on, on those things. Okay. Let's go to 2015. You go down the line. Okay. Let's just do the first 20 guys Mm -hmm. guarantee by the end of it, 15 to 17, maybe even all of them. I haven't looked at the list are hall of famers and you eventual hall of famers. Sure. Sure. Like eventual hall of fame players. Sure. My point is when they were like the competition's better, that doesn't mean anything. If I'm never played something before and you've never played something before and we play each other, who's going to win? Competition does matter, though. It, it, it that, does. I know it does, and you're playing the, the best people in the world. If, period. At it, that point. But but the thing is, though, Yuli is like money. Money has a huge, huge role because again, the argument is when when everyone when when everyone was talking about when I first came into the sport, everyone was saying Ken Climo was the goat. No, Paul McBeth is the goat, right? And the argument that they were using against Ken Climo is the same argument that we're using against Paul Macbeth. Now the argument that people are using against Ken Climo to say that Paul Macbeth is the goat is Ken Climo was playing not against anyone good back then. And that is the same argument that is being used now for Gannon. People are saying Paul Macbeth wasn't playing anyone good back then. And, and, and and guess what? The goat is different from the best player of all time. The greatest of all time argument is different. Well, than we're talking about it. just the best season. And to me, right. I think you and have so, to look at the context. Right. And so let, let me, here's, here's another point. You have the, what I think is, I think Ken Climo is the greatest player of all time. He won nine straight. That's, that's your best player. Mm. Okay. Paul McBeth's the goat to me. Be- best career. Right. Paul sure. McBeth is the goat to me because of what he's done for our game. He's done a lot. Yeah. He, yes, he he's really my goat. Okay, I All got right. you on okay, that. Okay, so now let's take Paul McBeth. You're going to tell me we and and anybody who has the argument it's between Ken Climo and Paul. There's nobody else, right? Yeah, no, not right it's, now. Without Correct. a doubt, it's so let's just take Paul. You're going to tell me that Paul's best season, who is the GOAT of all time, doesn't match up to Gannon who's played 3 years? That so doesn't that, I, no no no. Let me I, let me keep going. Because I, here's my I don't point. think it matters if how many Gannon, years you've played though when you're just looking at the best season. No, no, no. Here, let me let me put it into context. Paul McBeth has another season like he did. Let's say he ha- he played in as many elite series as Gannon does. In two w- years, he'll have ten majors. In two years, Gannon would have how many? Four. It's a no brainer with the exact amount of wins. I know, but you got to. So let me try to explain my point one more time. I know. I know and your then, point. The, and then, the well, competition, there's, some, there's more good players now because there's money involved. Everybody dedicates their life and they go yeah. dedicating your life to something. We just heard crazy. John Brooks said he got in his car with three dudes with nothing to go be but, good at disc golf instead of, instead of being a freestyler, right? Where he was getting paid, he wanted to dedicate his life to disc golf. The dedication doesn't stop when you're talking about this. No, I'm not. That's not. That's not my thing. I, I think my perfect example is um, my perfect example is this. And because like Mad Dog said, Brody, there's there was no money in the game in 2015. None of these kids would even tour, including Gannon. That that's kind of my point. Is someone they that is the world. Someone that is good enough to win a tour, to win a tour event, James Proctor was not playing events because the, it didn't make sense to him financially. So you had someone good enough to win an event, not playing events because of the money. So now that money is slowly coming in, you have more people like James Proctor 
coming out. And so that that's just my point at the end of the day is I think week in, week out, Gannon is having to beat higher competitive players than Paul was. And that it, there, you can't make an argument like that because it's like any sport. Uh, it was very clear to me in Ultimate Frisbee, if Ultimate Frisbee all of a sudden became D1 and there was super huge money potentially made in Ultimate Frisbee, I knew my role was not going to be the number one player on my team. I was going to be lucky enough to make a team. And that that's just common sense okay, that me, if money is you sorted, you're going to get better athletes into the sport. How, I many, mean, people, how many people who weren't out, outside the top 20 in the world won this year? If, the, if your point is that, then number 50 should be winning tournaments, and they don't. So you no, no, I'm be- saying it's even harder now because you do have the, the top end talent is so high and so good that it's so hard. That Paul, can, Paul and Ricky won everything. You, you're still being, what I'm saying is it, at one point you have to go in golf. Like it's completely different in golf because guy ranked 130th might win the tournament. You get what I'm saying? Like 130th, like yeah, top and, 100. And golf, golf has a ton of money and a lot more players. Sure. Disc golf will eventually get there if there's a ton of money in it. That's exactly my point. Your Is point, your, no, your, no, your, but, the, but you have to, you have to put a stat line on it then. Like at what, at what, how many more better players are there? How many people are so good? Like what is the lowest sky? Well, I, I look win? at, I look at, I, I go and I look at that 2015, that video that we just watched Yeah, that you're in. And one of the best players in the world is Nate Doss right there. Three putting from 20 feet. That doesn't happen on the pro tour. Hey, Gannon misses four footers three times, three times a month. It spits straight back out at him. Are you, are you, lo- no, are you no, lost? No, stop, 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 you, stop. Oh, show, show me a footage. Show me of one video of Gannon missing a putt as close as Nate Doss was in that video. Nate Doss missed a 10 footer. Show me one video of Gannon missing a 10 footer. Okay. Somebody will have him tapping uh, no, in and missing. My point, my point is this, Yuli. My point is this, is when I look at 2015 and I look at those guys, like yeah. I think Ricky is playing probably better right now <laughs> than he was back in 2015. It's crazy. Have you watched the 20, that final nine? You, and think Ricky, Ricky, you think Ricky is worse now than he was in 2015? Paul McBeth birdie 26 out of like 29. I'm not talking about Paul. I'm not talking about Paul. I'm talking about Ricky. Do you we think are, Ricky is better now than he was in 2015? His overall course. game. Of course. That's what happens. Yeah, and he doesn't win nearly as much as he was winning back in 2015. He wins the same uh, more probably. What do you are, no. are, are, no. are you serious? Like, what's no. the most Ricky's elite series Ricky's? Ricky's won two world titles. Yuli, when I first got into foundation, I, I'm just gonna say this little antidote, and I'll Ricky leave it won here. Like four times last year. Yeah, but there's some tournament. My point is, there's some tournaments that like, Ricky's not even close to winning. He literally went a full year going back and forth with Paul. It, it just no, he can't, didn't. It, no, he didn't. That just can't happen anymore. Paul, Ricky didn't just take second place to everybody the year. Paul, Paul got beat by, by Michael Johansson, but he got beat by Jeremy Coling. He lost four times in the national tour in seven events. Is it not antidote? What is, what's the word Silas? Give Give me the word Silas. Is that an, an, antidote? What was the word I'm looking for? Line, line. What, what are you trying to say? What's the where it's like uh it's something from like a personal antidote a- 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 antidote 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 yeah. antidote okay. all right you know antidote antidote tomato tomato also we need to get Edwin in on here because I want to hear what Edwin has to say but we're we're ready with him whenever okay. you want I'll leave it I'll I'll say this and I'll leave it at that and you take it for what you want Yuli because I th- I think this is this is actually very fascinating because things change very very quickly. So there was a, a moment in time when I joined Foundation Disc Golf that Paul McBeth had a bet, I believe it was with Trevor, that he would not finish outside the top three all year. Now, this is not to say that like having that mentality is bad. You have to have that mentality that you are the best and you're better than everyone else. You Easy have to do when you've done it before. You have to have that mentality <laughs> to be the greatest, right? It was, I, th- I don't think he made it week one. 
And I don't even know how many times he even finished in the top three of that year. Like the, the sport just evolved very quickly over the last couple of years. And it, and it, it, it is what it is. It just, it's a different, it's a different landscape now than it was. And it's much harder to see in other sports that have uh, a much long lasting and also have the money because right now, if you're a gifted athlete, you are trying to play baseball. You are trying to play football. You are trying to play basketball. We don't really have that in disc golf yet because the money's not there yet. But eventually, if it does get there, you're going to get a lot more people trying to be really freaking good at disc golf. And that's where you're going to have, you know, a bunch of Calvins and Gannons and ABs and all those people showing up. I get that. But there's no winning a tournament. You have the best player, the second best player, the third best player. You have these guys lined up all the way to 100. Sure. You had it back then. You have it now. There's no difference to me. So the would it be, would, it be better, imp- would sure, you be but- super impressed if this off season, I just went around to all these C and B tiers in Texas and won all of them. Would, would you be, be thinking, would you be thinking that I was going to go on tour next year and just tear it up? Or would you look that's at the competition? That's not a good point at uh, all. Or would you look at the competition of the people that I'm beating and be like, well, the competition is different. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. The top 50 is the top 50 then. You didn't have these guys. So it's the same be, being number one with whatever pool you have is just as hard as being number one in whatever pool you have here. There's no telling. Okay. So you put this one back there and then Paul learns how to go and be the goat in this era of he, if he was born and he was 15 today. Like no, but it's my point path. is, my point is like, I'm playing in the top 50 of Texas. That's not nearly as impressive of the top 50 of the world. Right. We're, we're saying the same thing. My point is, though, no matter what, it's going to be the same amount of difficulty for anybody to win. If the competition is what it is from year to year, it's always going to change. It's always going to get harder. But winning now is the same as winning. If I like, no, I disagree with that. It How? Because, because when I played Ultimate Frisbee, I'm telling you right now. No, no, if no. I, we're if, talking about. Well, I'm talking about in, in, in it's just, it's the same as like Michael Jordan winning when he won. But see, that's, that's not a great comparison though, because basketball we'll golf. again, a golf. not a great, not a great comparison. You have to go way back. You have to go way back to where these guys were playing in an era that like golf was very new to where there weren't that many people traveling around. There weren't that many people taking it seriously. There's you, a ceiling. There's a ceiling. This golf is not that old. I know this year. My point is this. I get what you're saying. If you take this talent pool into what we have now, they're going to get smacked. I know that with the talent pool that they had, you bring it here. They're going to get smacked, but that doesn't matter because that wasn't, that's not the case. It is as hard as it is now. It's the same. You have to overcome and win tournaments in order to be considered to have the greatest year of all time. It's the same difficulty. It's the hardest it has ever been at that point. It, that's the best. Uh, okay. So, so here, here's a perfect example. Here's a perfect example. Would, would it be harder to win a gold medal right now in the hundred meters or back when Usain Bolt was running? You can't travel in time. This is the age old thing of sport. It, you can't be like, well, just because he didn't but, have but the that's competition a very, now. I'm saying that's a very empirical thing. There's, there's literally a time that shows no, no, no. you exactly you, okay, how perfect. fast people yeah, so are take, running. Take the competition now and then throw them on a par 54. Dude, I'm going to win tournaments. If I played against the players right now and we go and play a par 54 all year long, yeah, I'm going now, to what you're saying is tournament. right. And you, what you're saying is what you're saying is correct. If you, if we take and go to a par four, 54, we played a lot of times, not in 2005. What, what that's going to do honestly is what that Gannon's still going to shred. Ricky's still going to shred, but you know who else is going to shred Matt Bell. You know who else is going to shred? Gannon, uh, uh, Barsby. Like you are now putting in even more people and that are think, going to sh- yeah, that are going you, to shred. It's going to be even harder to win. Point, and my point is, 
And my point is, you don't think that Paul McBeth comes out of there and wins Worlds. With the field that we have now? Yeah. He might, but I, I wouldn't put money on it. Money on Gannon? I don't think I'd put money on anyone. Because Gannon hasn't won a Worlds. Isaac's won two. Oh, I, I might put Isaac on there in a par 54, honestly. You know, like <laughs> I, 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 all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is if, if I, if I show up and I see the field and I'm like, that guy's really freaking good. That guy's pretty good. That guy's pretty good. That guy's pretty good. That guy's pretty good. I feel really, I mean, here's a perfect example, college football this year. Who the heck, who the heck do you think is going to win college football this year? There yeah. is not an outright good team. No. But, decent but what about a couple years ago? Alabama. Bama. Better than everyone. So, like, do you think that Bama team, if you if that Bama team played in the future, what do you think they would they would dominate? They would dominate everyone. And so it's okay to have better players in different eras. It's I, I get what you're saying. He was the best in that era, and that does take a lot. That does take a lot. I'm not I'm not discrediting that. I'm just saying at the end of the so day, then, you so do have we, to look. It, you have to look that if Gannon is showing up and saying there are 25 people that have a legitimate chance to beat me this weekend, that is harder to win that tournament than Paul showing up and saying I'm only really worried about three. That's crazy. If that is what the comparison is, those two scenarios are completely different. They are completely different scenarios. Let's get let's get Edwin on here. I'm curious what because yeah. I don't know actually know which way Edwin's me, going me with neither. this one. I'm actually very curious. All right, Edwin stats, ladies and gentlemen, join tour life for the first time. All right, we can hear you. What what do you got for us? Let's hear it. Break it break it down for us. I will. And it's, it's good. Cause I think what I'm sharing, cause I kind of agree with, Ooh, I am definitely blurry. Um, I definitely agree with points from both of you guys. And I think this analysis will help kind of bridge the gap between the two. Um, one thing I will say, we've talked about this before around the four minute mile. I know you used this example before. Um, nobody ran a four minute mile for ever. Somebody did. And then within 12 months, 15, 20 more people do it. Yep. What we like to do is say things like, People today are better than in the past. Gannon's better. The, 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 the field is better. I agree. I think common sense says that that's what's happening. The issue is, is that if Paul Macbeth circa 2012, when he was coming up, 2009, whatever it was, was in today's world, it would be like the post four minute mile, like the way he trains, the, the amount of money that's in the game, the way that he gets from tournament to tournament. We always try to hold in isolation the old player like the Bill Russell or the Ted Williams or the Paul Macbeth or Ken Climo in this case and say everybody today is better, but bring them to today's world mm. and let them grow up over the last 10 years with yeah. a better technology and equipment and people putting more effort into the sport and training more. And Macbeth is probably better than he was back then. So like, I think that gets left out a lot, but I'm not here to talk about that. The idea, That's a good point. Uh, yeah, the idea of strength of field is something that will never, ever it will end conversation as it will end debate. If you just say competition is stronger now. So if I look 10, 20 years ago, I cannot give any credence or weight to those seasons or those stats because they don't matter. I think what you have to do, but it does matter. It does matter that talent is getting stronger. Players are getting bigger, faster, more intelligent. Um, technology gets better. Um, I mean, listen, man, when I was, I'm old. Uh, you know, uh, I first played disc golf in 1999. There was no YouTube to go watch. I didn't know what a power pocket was. There was nothing to look at back then. And those are what a lot of the players like a Steve Brinster had to go through when mm. they started. Nowadays, a 12 year old can go online and join power disc golf Academy and start, you know, dominate, you know, learning the right techniques or whatever. So I think there's a lot going on there, but what I do think you can do is normalize the stats so that you can compare two seasons if the gap isn't that big. So if we look at Paul's 2015 in a lens like 2024, so we change the money, we look at the wins because he played as, as you Paul already said, he played in 13 less um, elite series events. If we adjust all that and the seasons are similar, I would always give the edge to Gannon in that case because stronger competition, all that stuff. Right. Um, and he did it over a longer season because what we're going to do is we're going to take Paul's shorter season and extrapolate it out to a full 2024 season. But if the gap is huge and I'm going to hint, it, it is pretty big. And we're going to look at the stats. If the gap is huge, then the debate becomes, is that gap completely explained away by just the talent wasn't as good back then. Mm. 
Mm. And I think that's the conversation to have. The stats that you brought up at the beginning of this are just unfair to show. And, yeah. and, and he was doing a good job with it. I think what my stats will do, it's not meant to declare a winner. It's meant to normalize and show apples to apples so that we can have a, a, like a good look at the two seasons side by side. And then we can have a conversation if – the competition was as strong now as it was back then, what would Paul have done? But so anyway, Silas, if you want to jump right into it, I think he has the slides. I can share them. Oh, that's blurry. Oh, wow. (laughs) I don't even know. We're going to have to send these out afterwards. Oh, I see it clear now on the screen. I think it's good. So the first slide is just laying out and I know we're running out. It's already past 10 o'clock, but um, we're not running out of time. Come on, Edwin, you've been around here long yeah, enough. Didn't you just win the longest uh, <laughs> podcast in eternity? Um, but this just shows the two seasons without adjusting anything. So on the left side, you have Paul Macbeth. Um, as Yuli said, five majors. If you look on the right side, Gannon only had four. Um, Paul won all five. Gannon won 50% of his with an average finish of 4.8. Super, you know, this is what we're talking about. Would Paul have won all five? four events if you played this year probably not but we can still normalize the stats and then look at them at the end um and then when you look at the national tour event and for those who don't know that's what the dgpt used to be called the nt the national tour he played in seven so he only played in 12 total events um and on the right side you have this long laundry list of 20 dgpt events that gannon played in so these are just laying out their two seasons um the two things I, i i pulled out at the bottom which i think is valuable is that the NT or the, you know, the elite series plus major win rate for Paul was 66%. He won two out of every three tournaments he entered that year. Gannon's about one out of every three. Okay. So that's just in a vacuum. We, we can talk about strength of field, but that's a pretty big difference. The second is in the eight wins that Paul Macbeth had, his average winnings was just over 5,000. In Gannon's nine wins, that's a typo. I wrote eight. I don't think anybody can see it because it's blurry, but it should be nine. Um, his average win was 17,000, over three times more which is why when anybody starts showing dollars earned or prize money, it's kind of a joke. As a matter of fact, I didn't pull this number, but I saw somebody say that, you know, Paul played in these, what, seven to 12 events. If he won all 12 of them, he would have made $60,000 that year, yeah. which is less than a third of what Gannon made. The, so the like, money, the money is a bad one. Cause again, disc golf so young. It cha- it's the change is correct. massive. So what I did and Sil- Silas, you can go to the next slide and it's going to be a little wonky to see, especially blurry. Um, but the next slide will show how I tried to normalize Paul Macbeth's 2015 campaign into 2024. So basically, uh, you still have on the left side, you have Paul Macbeth's 15. On the right side, you have Gannon's 2024. I color-coded them, but basically green. There are six events that existed today that exist today that also existed in 2015. Three of the majors, European Open, Worlds, USDGC. And then there was three regular NT events, Beaver State Fling, Ledgestone and Maple Hill for those events, because they're one-to-one, all I did was take Paul McBeth's finishing place from 2015 and award him the money as if he played it this year. So if he won, he gets the winner's purse. If he finished third, he gets whoever got third, their purse. So that's a very easy one. Nobody should have any problem with that. Um, In yellow, there's um, four events or five events, sorry, one major and four regular uh, uh, elite series events where I just paired them together just to make it easier. So basically up top, you have the Aussie Open and the Champions Cup. I I put them side by side and said, let's assume they're a very similar event. Down bottom, there's four events. I I put the Memorial with Chess, Glassblown Open with Waco, whatever, whatever. Same approach. If Paul Macbeth, look at the Aussie Open, he was first. He won $4,600. That's the top line we're looking at in yellow. If he would have been in the Champions Cup and won it, what would he have gotten this year? And that's how I made the adjustments, which will be on the next slide. So those two, I think, make sense. Where it becomes tough is everything on this screen, which I guess is coming across as like peach. Um, there's one major, actually, that Gannon didn't play in. We know Gannon played four and Macbeth played five. So if we're going to try to show apples to apples, we actually got to reward Gannon with one more major. And we, But there's 13 NT events that, because Paul played seven, Gannon played 20. There's 13 events we have to adjust for. So we're going to assume that Paul McBeth did play the same amount of events as Gannon Burr and performed at the same level as he did in the, the in what he did in 2020, 2015. So if that makes sense, he's going to get new winnings or new prize purses based on 2024 and all of his win percentages and everything will stay the same. So Silas, jump to the next slide. You can actually go too because the next one was a bunch of words to help Brody because Brody was supposed to go through this. Um, you're better is, at it though. People are so much happier you're doing it, not me. Yeah, you're doing good. 
I'm just trying to stay far back because as uh, the guy that was just on said, this is a face for radio. I want to be far back. Um, <laughs> but uh, so so what this is doing is I'm making all the adjustments. So I don't need to go through all of them, but just so that people can have confidence in what I did and we can have a discussion around it. Um, you can see that top line for the Aussie Open, as I mentioned, when he actually won the Aussie Open as a major back in 2015, Paul made like 4,600 bucks. If he won Champions Cup this year, which Andrew Presnell did, Presnell got 15K, so he gets the 15K. European Open, Paul won, and so did Gannon Burr. So they get the same amount of money, right? You can see it's 12.5 across the board. So on and so forth all the way down. When you get to the red or the, the peach color here, these are where I had to make the biggest assumption, which is that Paul didn't play in these events, but if he did, he would have had the same average finish that he did in the seven NT events he did play in. Okay. His average finish was 1.7. 1.7 is basically saying you win 30% of the time, you finish second 70% of the time. That averages to 1.7. That's basically what he did. He won three out of seven events. So all I'm doing for all of the peach is saying, assume that that's Jonesboro. Assume that that's MCO, DDO, it's Idlewild. I averaged all of those 13 tournaments, first and second place, gotcha. average wins together, and just said, what does 1.7 get him? And it would get him around 9,700 per event. By finishing first a third of uh thirty percent of the time, finishing second seventy percent of the time. After doing all of that, I also award wins because his win rate, Paul had a certain win rate in 2015. In those 13 events, he would have had a very uh, or not a very similar, the exact same win rate is what I assumed. So he picked up more NT wins, national tour wins, or we can call them elite wins if we're looking at 2024. He would have picked up more wins in those 13 events, right? And then Gannon's, which isn't highlighted, um, uh, in peach, although it should be on the top, right. Gannon's one, um, tournament that, or one major that he didn't play in, which was the Scandinavian open that Paul did. He averages 4.5, um, average finishing position. So I awarded him money based on averaging four point, uh, or sorry, not 4.5, 4, 4.8. I, I awarded him the average winnings of finishing 4.8, but I gave him a half of major win. He won 50% of majors in 2024, two out of four. So if he played one more major, on average, he would win half of that major. So I know it's weird to show when I show these stats, he's going to have 2.5 major wins, saying some years he'd get two, some years he'd get three. But based on his performance, if there were the fifth major, he was a 50% chance of winning it. So then if you go to the next, the last slide, it's what I think is the final view of the two seasons, um, Silas, which is, again, uh, Paul Macbeth, if you look at it's two, it's, oh, there it is. Um, so Paul Macbeth won 100% of his five majors. Assuming Gannon played five majors, he would have won 2.5 or 50%. That doesn't change. So Paul Macbeth has doubled the majors of Gannon. In terms of NT wins, this is not including um, major wins. It's just looking at NT or elite wins. Gannon um, still has his seven because that doesn't change. He played in 20, won seven. If Paul played in 20, based on his win rate, he would have won 11.5, which is 58%. So again, almost double what Gannon got. So double the majors, almost double the elite series wins. The third numbers don't change at all because we're using averages. So Gannon's average finish this past year, which was incredible, was 4.2. Macbeth's was 1.4. Those don't change because we're extrapolating it out and assuming they both perform the same way. Um, and then the final one is, I think, what people need to see, which is if you adjust Paul's winnings from 2015 to today, He's got, he almost breaks 300,000 and he has 50% more than, than Gannon did this year. So, and actually, if you just take the events that Paul Macbeth actually played in, the 12 events he played in, and just say he, he plays 12, Gannon plays double, 24, in the 12 events that, that Paul Macbeth played in, he would have gotten $165,000, which is not bad at all, in half the events that Gannon played in. Mm -hmm. So, what is this saying? It's saying that, the gap between Macbeth's 2015 and Gannon's 2024 20, is significant after you normalize for apples to apples. If we are willing to say as a community that disc golf was so bad and so uncompetitive in 2015, that 50% more money and double, double the wins would have completely been erased. And, yeah. that, and, I'm not, and here's the thing, Brody. I'm not taking, I'm, I'm a Gannon Burr fan. That's a Gannon Burr signed disc. No, right no, no, there. no, I know. I do want to bring, a, I, I'm curious, I do want to bring a couple things because I'm curious what you thought, where your thoughts on it, right? Because strength of schedule is something that mm -hmm. is uh, factored in, for example, like college football r rankings. Like if you go out and you go undefeated, they look at who did you play? And if you didn't play anyone good, guess what? You're not getting into the playoff. So the, the, a couple, a couple things I want to point out, right? These last couple years, what have we seen? 
players that have the longest cash streaks end. Just people just not being able to cash. They used to cash all the time. Mm -hmm. Now they're not cashing. Guys saying like, hey, if I just mess up once or twice on the course now, I'm not dropping down a spot. I'm dropping down 10 spots. And I just, let me, let me just quickly, real quick, the Australian open. Cause I haven't looked this up. The Australian mm-hmm. open, which was one of the majors that Paul won in 2015 had 25 people playing Paul Macbeth won. Second place was Simon Lazat. Third place was Ricky Wysocki. Fourth place was Nate Doss. Fifth place Fellberg. Sixth place, Hu Ho Rontelahio, seventh place, Chris Adiego, eighth place, Christopher Finn, ninth place, Sean Capalaco, tenth place, coming in at 960 rated, Neil Roberts. So uh, that I think at the all, at the end of the day, I think that is what a lot of people are saying. They're not really saying and putting be- down Paul's thing. Cause like if Paul goes and wins a tournament by 10 shots, it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't really care who was there. If Gannon was there or not, I think Paul beats him. I think the, the big thing here is like at this tournament, which was a major, there are six guys at this event or sorry, there are five guys at this event that I would be considered. How dare you slander Chris's name? There are five guys at this event that would probably be able to play in the field today. The yeah. rest of these guys aren't getting into a normal disc golf pro tour event. If you just get rid of that tournament, he still destroys them. No, no, but, but my, right. my point was just saying though, Paul, my point was just saying is like these, these are kind of the fields. Uh, no, obviously that's this, not, that's no, no, this is obviously, yeah, this is obviously an outlier, but I just want yeah. to throw it out there. Cause a lot of people say you won five majors. Th- th- come on, this is not a major, um, but th- when you're looking at it, when we're, when we're having to pick and Yuli, you remember when it was, when it was the beginning of this podcast and we were having to pick who to win, we were just like alternating between a couple names. Mm-hmm. Now we'd you're alter, kind of like we'd alter through the same names. Ah, uh, yeah. There's more though. There's more. You'd still pick the same names. Uh, you're no, not I, gonna. Be, I'm picking different names now than I was, but I see what you're saying. You're still picking uh, between. Uh, but I'm saying the I'm number is guys. more. I think back then the number might be like two to three guys. Now I think it's probably circulating around like the five to seven range, right? Like know, if it's a certain time. Ta- Gannon, Ricky, and uh, AB won, I think, 80-something percent of the tournaments this year. Yeah. Yeah, those are the oh, three guys that you're putting crazy. for sure. Yeah. But I think I think you could throw Simon in there, right? Uh, I, I think, I think you could like, throw Isaac in there, certain Isaac tournaments. Sure. I agree, so, but just so I can jump off because I don't want to be on here. Um, but <laughs> what the way that I will close it out is this is why I think I'm in agreement with both of you. Like, Wilt Chamberlain scored a hundred points because mm-hmm. he was playing against plumbers and he who part-time NBA players. And he was taller than everybody. And he was able to just dominate. Wilt Chamberlain is not better than Shaquille O'Neal, but his stats are better. Correct. So that's why you have to normalize. I'm okay with that. But I think we're treating the best 15, like it was 1979, yeah. you know, it wasn't that long ago. Can you truly say when you look at these normalized stats, double the wins, double the majors, 1.4 average finish versus 4.2 and 50% more money. Can we explain all of that away by saying the Cole Redallans and that like second tier of awesome players that can pop off any week and win is so much making up that gap that it makes up some of it. I agree, but does it make up the full gap? And then I'll always go back to my four minute mile thing. Again, if you're going to, if you're going to say all these people today with all these benefits and technology and how the sport is viewed in YouTube and all this stuff, if they get all those benefits, but you're going to hold, Macbeth in a vacuum and say he's the Macbeth of 2015. That's not fair. Macbeth would have all those. I, I agree with that. Out. So I that agree is, with that. You know what I mean? So like, I would just say that this gap is the is what shows a season. A little bit. I do think that it matters that the talent is stronger now, but I don't think it makes up this gap. Is what I would say, and that's coming from a huge Gannon fan who truly believes in 15 years we're going to look back and Gannon's the goat. 
I, I believe that like he's dominant. He's amazing. As long as he doesn't get injured and he stays focused. Cause he's, he's more focused than anyone I've ever seen. I, I am a big Gannon fan and I, it hurt me to see these stats the way they are, because it's just obvious that McBeth, from a statistical perspective, McBeth's season was dominant, not slightly better, not 20% better. It's dominant to what Gannon did this year. And my only pushback to there is like when I first came on tour, cause that's all I can really talk about is like when I'm on tour, the amount of people that were going from event to event in 2020 was a very small number compared to the amount of people that are going to event and event now. And so it, it, James Proctor is my perfect example in this, a guy that has good enough talent to win a tournament wasn't playing in tournaments. So how many, how many, he just wasn't winning and he wasn't putting in a full season. He was only playing in the summer, you know, but he wasn't wasn't playing a full, he wasn't, my point is, is like Gannon Burr did back in the day, Gannon Burr would not have to beat James Proctor at every tournament. There was only a couple that he had to beat him at. Right. And so that's my only thing is like how many James Proctors were back in 2015 that were like, Hey, I'm good enough, but the money doesn't make sense for me to tour. No, I, I agree, but and so that's why I'm, I'm on your side with that. I think, and if you use that's sports, the biggest argument for Gannon. That's, right, but, yeah, but oh, does absolutely. it close the full gap? Is the point? Is um, if, if I, their I, seasons were similar, if they if the amount of wins, if the amount of money, if everything was very similar, Gannon hands down has a better season. I I think the tournaments that, you know, Paul got third, I don't think he would get third. I think he would get like 11th or 12th. But with a hundred per hundred dollars more in cash, I could do, I'll do an analysis where I drop him down to 10th in a lot of tournaments, drop him to 12th. He's still going to win. I mean, mathematically, Well, I don't think money is a good, I don't think money is the good indicator here. Position because it's tied. 15th and still win. Yeah. I I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Tournaments and take, I can take five tournaments and say, Paul doesn't play them. And he still has more money than getting this year. Hundred percent, I can pick five. But, but here's a here's a here's a good point too, and I and it, it's one of the arguments that I've been I've been saying for the last few days online when I've been keyboard warring against a few people who come at me. It's fun, this. man. It's is what sports yeah. are all about. Yeah, exactly. And it is and it is this. I said, how can you have the greatest season of all time and you didn't win a world championship? This is a big time point. Because the world championship is more important to everybody. It's more important to everybody. So that's the one you have to win, right? You have, it's like having a regular season and winning all the time. Once you get to the playoffs, that's when winning matters at the world championships, unfortunately. And I'm a big advocate for getting rid of the world championships. Mm -hmm. So this is a good point for me. At the world championship, it is the most important, and most people would trade three, two majors for the one for the world title. It's harder to win because of that. And I had pushback from people because they don't understand the pressure that comes with it. I've been in the hunt at multiple world championships and it was different than when I was in the hunt at the U S championship, which I've been in the hunt at those, the pressure's different. You can see it in your competitor's eyes, how important it is. And that's why it's tougher to win. It is. That's why we look, we don't say how many majors does Paul have? We say how many worlds does he have? We don't say how many majors did Ken Climo have? We say how many world championships does he have? No, I agree with you on that. How many, World championships did Gannon get this year? A big goose egg. But if you're if you're doing player of the year and someone wins every event, but no, we're, worlds, not doing, we're doing best season of all time. Let's not no, no, I, I I agree to you. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I'm just yeah. saying the 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 part that I wouldn't agree is if someone won worlds it's and then someone else won every other event. I can't say that that no, person no, no. that won worlds I, had a better season than I the agree. person. I agree. But, I'm saying it's the hardest one to win. That's a big yeah. key in, a component in what the world of disc golf thinks of the best year of all time. This is also not a great analogy because cool. obviously uh, the, the playing conditions, all those things, I do think probably MVP is probably Maple Hill set up more difficult now than it was in 2015. Um, with that being said, Paul's score would have put him at 11th place in 2015 uh, at Maple Hill this year. But just one thing. Now, obviously that's not through. apples to apples. You can't really do that, but th- I'm just throwing it out there that they're, you know, 
it, it's not it's not like Paul would just is just running away with the field. I don't think that's what you're saying either, Yuli. Um, but I, I, I think it's close. I, I don't think it's. I don't well, think it's still, what Paul's Ricky's still, saying. He hasn't won in a year, but it's not long. very long ago that Paul's winning on this tour. Yeah, he won um, Worlds which, a couple years ago. Uh, so we're talking about, like, I, again, we're comparing how yeah. you have the, another one of my points. How do you have the GOAT that we all agree is the GOAT? And then his best season ever, which is in it's nuts, statistically nuts. How is that not the best season ever? And my last point is this. This topic came up for me because Ricky said he compared the two. Okay. Ricky's seen both. He's competing against both. He just went out and did incredible stuff at the Pro Tour Championship and Gannon caught him. Right. I didn't understand and the so, people that were saying that Ricky was salty. Yeah. And, and was like, and he's, I don't and, understand that. I, the Paul, people are basically saying, like, oh, he's just putting Gannon down because he just lost to him and he's salt. I didn't understand that. Take. I don't either because they're friendly on the course. I see them having fun. Let me tell you this. Ricky's not going to give Paul Macbeth flowers like that. In my career, they've had a little beef. Yeah. Their whole, the whole career, they've had that competitive little beef. They didn't like each other. You know, they were cordial, but you can ask both of them. Maybe one side says different than the other, but from my experience of seeing them together, there was some beef there. Yeah. And he's saying, no, Paul Macbeth's season, that was unbelievable. And it's not even close. So now we have an eyewitness of both who played with both on the same card who I would. Okay. So he just lost to this guy, but this guy kind of dominated him his whole career. You know what I mean? Is he way outweighing him in the, in the more recency bias? I don't know. But yeah. I, I, responded, I think it's a pretty level, a level comment for him to say. Yeah. I responded to that saying case closed, like on Twitter as it was my response being like, this guy probably has, as far as the eye test goes, because that's that really ultimately is kind of what we're talking about here is yeah. eye test who was who pl- who was playing better, and he played with both of them and probably had the best seat with both of these guys for a long time. So like that's why I was kind of like just case closed. My I'm just saying you have to kind of give the other side. It, it's a close. It's a closer race with the field uh the strength of field yeah it, it just I makes it and it makes it fun man we we haven't really been able to do this in a while you know well, we were doing this when calvin had that incredible season last year no want, one was comparing it to paul's and i want people to understand too from my perspective the year that gannon just had is the best year that i've seen ever except for the year that paul did that like what <laughs> he is doing I've never seen before in my long career. I've never seen it except for the year where I didn't beat Paul Macbeth one time and I was ranked fourth in the world. We're not, we're not bringing rate. People are saying how many, you, how many 1040 guys that Paul yeah. had. We're not being ratings in here. Um, we can't bring ratings. I in understand here. how good Gannon's season is, but I also understand the landscape of the sport and where it's been because I live there and I did it and I competed with competed with these guys now i'm not competing with with gannon that's not what i'm saying uh they're in a different world from me with that talent all right season's incredible the season's incredible that gannon had and uh i'm looking forward to see if he can beat it next year because if he get if he starts beating it by a lot then all of a sudden we're gonna have this argument again but it's gonna be tough to it's gonna be tough to to beat five majors in my opinion even if he beat um seven people Yes, still the, a major. that just shows you guys that even if something does support my argument, if I don't agree with it, I'm not bringing it in there. Rating supports my argument. I'm yeah. not bringing it in there. Uh, Edwin, before you go, you pick a side. One final. Who are you, who are you saying? Best season of all time belongs to? As weird as this sounds, I think if you pull them both and put them <laughs> on a course today, Gannon beats Paul. His skill set today versus Paul's back then, but the best season ever was Paul's. There you have it from the stats man himself, Edwin. We appreciate Edwin, all you, you did do. Great, man. Thank you for coming. You crushed it. First, that, yeah. first debut and not yeah. your last Edwin. So be on the ready at all times. And you're looking handsome. Don't let those guys detour you. You look <laughs> handsome on the camera, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was so focused. I didn't read the comments. No, no, no. Hey, not reading okay. the comments is the best thing you can do. All right. Appreciate you, brother. Go. 